So if I'm going to put some image into this document, I need to make sure that the layers are set up correctly. So I'm going to lock the text layer to start off with, and then I'm going to unlock the images layer and then left click on the images layer. I'll then go to file. And then for this instance only, I will choose the place command from the list, but I will in future just use the keyboard shortcut of command D, which is on the Mac. And then that would obviously be control D on a PC so that I can import my images. It takes me to my links folder. I can then click on the first image in here, Article 01, and then I will choose Open. That loads into the cursor. Um, I'm going to click and hold down the mouse in an area where there isn't much content. So I click and hold down the mouse here, drag out like so, just to get the image in there, which is, you know, it's a square ratioed image. Uh, I will then, because I'm going to scale and rotate this image, I'm going to turn on the uh, auto fit checkbox up at the top. That will link the frame to what's inside it. So if I do scale and rotate, both the frame that it sits inside of the container and the image will be affected at the same time. Then up here for the width and height, I need to change this one to 65. Notice that both these values change at the same time because the link icon is turned on for the width and the height. So this is in the control panel across the top of in here. And then I need to just move this over here where we've got some text and the blue background because I need to add a stroke around the outside. So we want a border on here, which is this one here for the stroke menu. Uh, white, of course, is paper. Press the return key to make the pop-up disappear. And I'm going to increase the stroke weight to about five points in there. Should be enough. So we get a nice white border around the outside. Final step then um, in terms of the appearance of this is to go to the FX icon at the top and then choose drop shadow. Uh, inside of here then, um, I will, I always leave the opacity set to around about 75% to start off with. So you can at least see the drop shadow on screen. If you can't at this stage, do make sure that the preview checkbox is turned on. And then from here, well, the distance, I probably want the distance of the shadow to be not quite so far away. Uh, I'm going to leave the angle uh, set to what it is, but I'm going to increase the size of the drop shadow in here, which it really is just how soft the edges are. So if I just tap up in there and yeah, two, two millimeters is probably fine for that. And then finally go back up to the top. Once I get the drop shadow just about right, probably drop the opacity of this to 50%. And then you can always click in a different field to see what that looks like. So yeah, that's fine. You know, it stands out. Uh, it matches the style guide for uh, take a break and then I can click. Okay. So um, from here, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to put it into the position where it needs to be, roughly speaking. So around about here, it also has a rotation on it as well. So I can go up to this menu at the top. This is the field for rotation and then tap uh, up in here. And that should um, rotate that uh, counterclockwise. Three degrees should be about enough. And then I just need to make sure that this far left edge of the image in here does all fit onto the layout in here. I don't want to move the photograph up too far because obviously that's going to start hiding their faces. I definitely don't want that, but I do want to just put down a touch in there to around about here. And with that done, I think then we can turn on text wrap because obviously I don't want the text and the image to share the same space on screen. Um, but before I do that, um, just to show you that it will affect any text in the region where the text and the image share the same space. So that's what text wrap does. And um, what we need to do then is apply text wrap. So at the top of here, we have four buttons for text wrap. By default, nothing has text wrap applied to it. But if I choose this option up here, which is wrap around bounding box, it creates an exclusion zone, which is exactly the same size as the item itself. So you always apply text wrap to an object, not the text. Um, and you'll notice now that wherever the text appears in the document, it is now um, avoiding that region. So this is a problem for the title because I don't want it to affect the title at the top. So if I just click away from the image and then unlock the text layer and then click on the text frame containing the title in here, I can then go to um, object, text frame options, and then say, uh, if I turn on preview in here, ignore text wrap. So we get the title still running over the top of the image in there. And then I'll click OK. I do want it to affect the other text in there, but I need to go back and select the image. And then I will need to go to the window menu and choose text wrap dedicate panel to show you that, yes, we do have text wrap applied, but it's exactly the same size as the object itself. Um, so from here, I'm going to unlink all of the offsets. This is where you can extend, increase or decrease the size of the text wrap. So if I unlink them, you've got options to text wrap and extend at the top, the bottom, 
left and the right hand side so in here I need to increase the right edge just to push the text away from that region and then increase the down offset as well so if I just increase that as well notice now that it's pushing the text out the way down at the bottom but obviously it's not affecting the title across the top so that looks as though it's about right in there I can then close down the text wrap panel uh, click away from the image to make sure it's not active and I will go back and then just lock the text layer again to make sure I don't um, interact with any text now uh, so the next one is uh, another image so it's going to be uh, command and D and then I'm going to open up this image here open um, I'm going to left click just to drop it in there and um, this is not quite the right size um, so this one needs to be 48 millimeters wide and 81 tall by my counting so if I go to my width and height in here must turn on at first auto fit I want to get the overall size right so I'm going to make sure that this is set to 81 for the height first of all 81 press return um, and then I'm going to turn off auto fit and I'm going to unlink the width and height because I want to just alter the width in here now as I mentioned that one needs to be about 48 so if I just swipe inside of there and type in 48 I get the width that I need I want to just make sure that um, the lady can all be seen in this photograph here as much as possible so if I just pick up my zoom tool on the bottom of the tools panel go down here and zoom in to view this image nice and clearly switch back to my selection tool at the top of the tools panel and then hover over and then click on the content grab in the middle so this will leave the frame where it is but I can move the photograph around inside the frame so I'll click on that and then if I tap the left cursor key on the keyboard I can just nudge that image in there like so so we get just the elbow creeping all the way into the image inside of there like so then click away and then I can click on the image and again um, do the same kind of thing so I can um, uh, from here I can apply um, a white outline increase that to five points and then add a drop shadow again inside of the FX icon at the top drop shadow um, again it gives me the default options in there so I know that this is set to 50% um, and then I'm just going to drop the angle a little bit in there and then increase that as well and I think we're all pretty much good to go and I can click OK this one also needs to be rotated as well so I'm going to in this case I'm going to tap down to rotate this um, clockwise um, to minus three degrees and again I'll go up to the top and apply text wrap to that image as well so now with the text wrap applied I can go to view and choose um, fit spreading window hover over the image and click and drag and move it down here it needs to sit in this column here so it's going to just run across the majority of this column at the bottom and it's going to creep into the column on the right hand side so just need to pull it across a little bit more make sure all the images is on the page in there again and then with it sat in there I can zoom in so I pick up my zoom tool and then I need to increase the offsets for this image as well so I got back to my selection tool and then um, I will need to go to the window menu go down to text wrap and then increase the up offset in there like so and the offset to the right hand side as well to push that out of the way and that's probably enough um, and then it's just a case of just tweaking the position of that content in there so I've got it looking like that I don't want that line of text to be all there yeah that's, that's probably about right click away from that if I press the W key for a preview in there I've got one nice line split in there there's no kind of words just hanging down in here on their own there's no kind of widows or orphans as they're called um, and um, that's just creeping into the second column inside of there so um, I could always try and just nudge it back over here just a touch so that it's not affecting that column in there so it's got a nice straight edge in there so that's all good um, now having made that I don't want to have to go and do that all over again two or three more times so if I go to the window menu at the top of the screen I can then go down to styles and then I can choose object styles pull this across and then with the image selected go down to the bottom hover over and then alt and left click on create new style now this will capture everything the drop shadow the white outline the text wrap as well and if I call this um, box outline 
Uh, apply style to selections, always worth turning it on to create the style and apply it to the original and then click OK. And then go back to window, uh, up to the view menu, uh, fit spreading window, click away from the image and then I can just leave these two handy on screen here just in case I need them and then go to uh, command and D, uh, pick the image here and choose open, uh, left click to drop that, oh watch out for that. You don't want to drop an image into a box, which is very possible. Um, as you can see, edit, undo, convert to frame, and it should put the image back into the cursor in there. So just click in an empty space. And then from here, just get the size of this looking the way that I need it, which to be 168 by 110. So if I just link the width and height in there and just tap down to 168, um, maybe one more in there. Yeah, that should be about fine. Then what I can do is go across to object styles and I can click on that one and I get my appearance exactly the same as before. So again, that will save you a lot of time around here. Then move this up just so it's positioned like this and I need to rotate this one as well. So I need to rotate this one um, three degrees and probably is a little bit big uh, at the moment. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit more now. So it's going to go to the height value in here and just scale this down. Oh, and just make sure that I turn on auto fit as well because I don't want to crop out too much of the image. Scale that down and then, and just start moving it up again in there like so. And again, I need to go to the offsets. So here I need to increase the offset to the bottom just so I get nice clean break lines in there. And I think that's probably enough. Maybe add an offset to the left hand side as well. Like so, but it just needs to come down just a touch more. Like so. And then click away and then one more image to bring in. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go to this tool here, the elliptical frame tool. I'm going to hover my cursor down here, uh, left click, just once to call it the dialog box so I can define the width and height of this ellipse because I'm going to put a photograph into a circle now. That one needs to be 71 by 71 millimeters and then click OK. Um, and if I switch to my selection tool, press the W key to get my grids and guides. You can now see because you have to be in normal editing mode to see the actual shape itself. Now that I've got a shape in place, I can go to file, uh, choose place. I can pick this image here, click on open. And then I need to just make sure that that fits inside the, the image container inside of there. So again, back up to the top, fill frame proportionally, and then I'm going to choose auto fit in there and then go back to box outline, even though it's not a box, it's technically a circle. And then just pan across, drag this over here, over the other image. And we've got there probably then need to link all these together and just increase the offsets for these a little bit more. So we've got that looking about right in there. Move it over a bit more uh, like so. And then we need to change this actually at the moment. It's set to a, 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 a text wrap of a box. But in here, if you choose wrap around object shape, we get a circular text wrap, which is better. And then I can increase the offset for this one. So that that is um, that's much better. So we've got a nice white space around there. If I press the W key around that content like so. So that's looking good. Um, in the next video, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at some of these text um, legibility issues that we've got and tidy those up before we move on and do anything else.